Hey everyone, it's Uncle George, and welcome back to Let's Play Ghost Trick. Uh, last time we got a whole bunch of exposition on uh, who exactly the man in the red suit was, and uh, what happened that one night ten years ago, and uh, now we're off to find Jowd by using a torpedo to get to him locked away in a little room in the middle of nowhere, which uh, sounds pretty useless to me, but we'll see what we can do. Um, at the moment, doesn't look like we can do much, Camilla's over there, we can't talk to her. Let's have a quick chat with Lynn and see what she has to say. Yeah, how's it going there? I'm just calculating the command room's coordinates now. I have to put in a slight offset, though. Don't want to blow it up. I'm sure Detective Jared would appreciate that. Well, leave this to me. Good luck with loading the missile. Okay, thanks. Well, that was pretty useless. Uh, no, I don't want to talk to her again. Come on, uh, around there, there we go. And, uh, what does... I think that's what missile I have to say. What will happen to these two ladies? I think that's up to us and our powers. What? There's no time to be standing around unsure of ourselves. Will you lend me your strength missile? Me? Of course I will! Count on it! <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so it uh, looks like we can hit the switch. What happens if we do that? This switch won't budge. Maybe it's broken, but I don't think the entire device is broken. It probably works fine if only I could move this switch. I just have to find a way to move it somehow. But I can't do it with my powers alone. Yes, heavy, heavy hinting there. Uh, let's just get out of the way so we can move to missile and uh, switch these two switch handles. Switch the switches. Uh, and now let's see what I can do with this particular switch. There we go. Huzzah! Yeah, it was the correct one. Just as well, really. There we go. That torpedo looks serviceable. We'll sit on this end, too. But something's odd. What is? The command room. It looks like it's slowly sinking. Sinking? Yeah, like it's completely run out of power. I wonder what happened. I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Right, okay, hop into the missile. I'll launch it for you. Okay, thanks. Well, that was pretty simple in the end. Uh, let's go. I've already set the torpedo's course. They'll head toward the command room where Detective Jared is. Twelve seconds after launching, it'll pass by the command room for an instant. That instant will be a window of opportunity to jump over to the command room. Okay, got it. She's done some pretty quick calculations there. If that thing is sinking, she has to know exactly where it will be exactly the distance from here, and so on and so forth. That's actually quite hard. Uh, all that in her head. Well done. Well done, then. And then we'll find a way to come back and save you. That'll probably be my last task tonight. Just hold on until we get back. Okay, come on, Missile. Missile? I... I'm sorry. I can't go. What? I just can't. How could I leave? I can't leave Miss Little. Let's try that again. I can't leave Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla behind. I can't do it. Missile. I swap the switches so the missile can be launched. You have to do the rest as well. I can't do it either. I can't ask Missile to come with me after that. I can understand, uh, I can un I understand exactly how he feels. Uh, not having a good day today, apparently. <laughs> I want you to go, Missile. What? But Miss Lynn! You staying here won't change our fate. But if you go with Sizzle, you might be able to make something happen, and that's our only hope. But what if that something doesn't happen? I'll never be able to see you again, never ever again! Even I can understand that! I I couldn't stand that! Don't worry, Miss All! Miss Camilla! I just know you and Sissy can make something happen. I believe in you! I'll be right here waiting for you. We'll see each other then, don't worry! Miss Camilla! And that was apparently all it took. That's a good point, Missile. Now are you ready? Remember, it's 12 seconds after I throw this switch. We're ready. Luckily, I don't think we have to wait exactly 12 seconds and hit a timer or anything like that. Sizzle? Yes? We never found out who you really were. But that doesn't matter now. All I know is I'm truly glad I met you tonight. Thank you for everything. I'm glad I met you, Detective and saved your life about five times. But we're going to see each other again, right, Sissy? Right, Missile? That's right. Well, you promised, little lady. Of course we will. I'll never forget you, no matter what happens. Here he goes, then. Good luck, friend. I thought that was broken, because that's the one we just swapped over to there. Off we go, then. Is the water gonna? Yeah, the water actually fills from the bottom. That's a, a nice touch. They didn't just reuse the animation of the water filling from before. But 
It's 12 seconds, the last thing of eternity. I was trying to think of a way to save Lynn and the little lady the whole time. But how can our ray of light, of hope, reach this far down into the deep sea? Before I can think of an answer, the 12 seconds are up. Here we are, just sitting, sitting in a torpedo, and blimey, that was some bloody good programming from Lynn there. And also, that's not good. Detective Jowd! I bet the big masked man did this! I'm going to bite him! You better not, it won't break your teeth. The command from has lost power and is sinking. So I wonder what this masked man is going to do. Let's talk to Detective Jowd! Good idea, let's uh, have a chat with Detective Jowd. So for the wet Detective Jowd. But who are you? Are you Cecil? Please excuse my appearance. I can't believe you made it here. How is Camilla? And what about Lynn? Well, it's kind of a long story. And I'm guessing we tell him. Yeah, I'll talk to Detective Jed about everything that happened with the submarine you know of. So the submarine is badly damaged? Why would he do that to his own submarine? I wish I knew. We do know, because the red suit guy told us? I know the answer to that one. It's because he's afraid of my powers. You! You followed us? I didn't even notice. How could he? There were only two cores on the torpedo. It's been ten long years, Detective Jared. Are you... your meal? And now it gets confusing, because the man in red suit in the ghost world, who we've known to be us the whole time, is not actually us. So, uh, yeah. So you remember me, do you? How could I possibly forget? So that's your real name, huh? Your meal? That's right. But those people in the you know were calling you Sissel. That's just an alias I was using for my deal with them. I didn't see any need to tell them my real name. Could you do me a favour? Would you let me ask you some questions? I've been trying to find out my true identity all night. Sure, go ahead. I'm sure there's plenty we can still tell you, right, Detective Jared? Right. Yep, uh, we've got more exposition coming up, I think. Uh, anyway, about your meal. Ten years ago, you were a top systems engineer, weren't you? Systems engineer? What's that? By the way, I'm a top Pomeranian, you know! Well, it's kind of hard to explain to a dog, but it's a person who's good at using computers. I don't mean to brag, but I was one of the best in the industry. That's how I got roped into joining that project. Project? What project? It was a project aimed at reorganizing the nation's top secret information. The goal was to build a new system using multidimensional programming theory. Or complete... um... BS, to be polite. I was asked to join the project by an agent of the government. It doesn't sound like something a top Pomeranian would know anything about. To me, it just sounded like another challenging job. However, the project was also the target of a secret plot. I bet you can imagine the kind of crime the nation's top secrets might attract. I never thought for the life of me I'd ever have to deal with spies. It was never made public, but every organization in the country moved on this one. And then one day, the name of a certain programmer as a suspect. I was the guy who built the core of the system. The police arrested you, and then that incident happened. He escaped from the interrogation room and took Lil in as a hostage. By the way, Detective Jared, when was it that I was proven innocent? About six months after your death. I'm so sorry, Emil. Uh, that's that's kind of sad that he was innocent and just questioned like that. I guess, uh, you know, um, we heard that Cabanella was quite hard on him with the questioning, so, uh, you know, I, I guess he sort of just got a bit stressed and cracked, who knows. Anyway, real motive for revenge. Ten years ago. Uh, yeah, a meteorite came down and hit him in the back. That was, uh, quite a coincidence, really, but I suppose it, it happens occasionally. My soul was split from my body, and I lost everything. I was sealed in eternal darkness. Now that's a different game. A very good one. I existed in this world. No question about that. But nobody noticed my presence. Well, good for my powers. They didn't help anybody. We've been helping people all night, so I don't know about that. Not even the passage of time could heal my pain. In fact, it only made it worse. 
I don't think he even knew about the park guy. Why would he be passing the park guy in his sort of uh, flashbacky emotion thing? Anyway, I wanted to disappear, but I wasn't even allowed to do that. The way Lynn described it is exactly uh, the way Lynn described it is exactly right. Sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea, an overwhelming feeling of loneliness and despair, and I wanted all of you to suffer what I was suffering. And so that's why you murdered Armor. That's right. I wanted to know what it was like to lose everything you cared about. I want you to feel the same pain I felt. What? Rather harsh. I mean, d that's the thing. Jao didn't do anything other than chase him, but, you know, it's not like Jao hit him in the back with a meteor. Uh, I think the revenge is rather unwarranted. Uh, anyway, it was a twisted wish of a mind poisoned by infinite loneliness. And then, as I was crossing my revenge, I had an idea. I came up with a plan to use these powers of mine to make a deal. Yeah, um, I think this this is supposed to be the point where we're supposed to start feeling sympathy for him. Uh, I, I have mixed feelings. Uh, I'll go into it after the deal, I think, actually. But something I just don't understand about that deal. I'm sure your powers will be very valuable to them. But what would you get out of the deal? New life. Life? I asked them for two conditions. Number one was that they helped me with my revenge plot. And the second was a rebirth for me. Rebirth? A new beginning, eh? care if it was a fake life, an artificial life. I just wanted a physical receptacle for my soul, a name, an identity, an everyday life. I wanted to grow old in a society that would accept me. And finally, I wanted to die, surrounded by a loving family. That's the kind of life I asked them for. A completely man-made life. That's right. I knew I couldn't hope for anything more than that. To make it all come true, I knew it, it would take a lot of money and a lot of power. That's why I decided to ask a national government to help me. And the response in the end was betrayal. Probably because they couldn't actually do it. I mean, it sounds very hard to get a ghost out of the ghost world and into a body permanently on a normal base skin. But anyway, betrayal. They were making their moves much more carefully than I suspected. They spice in this country and researched my powers on their own. And they even figured out what Temsic was all about. And you had no idea they were doing all this? Not at all. I was a fool. So then, why did they go to all the trouble of making a deal with you? Why didn't they just steal a hunk of the Temsic meter right from the park? They couldn't. Huh? It's one of my favourite little bits of dialogue I think in the game is coming up anyway. After the manipulator instance, research was conducted in this country too. A report was submitted to the government about the source of the manipulator's power. By Inspector Cabanella and the old pigeon guy, eh? At first, the government didn't believe the report. But then they decided to put the park under surve surveillance, just in case. Surveillance, huh? It just looks like an ordinary peaceful park, but there are armed agents there at all times. Don't tell me that odd leaflet guy is one of them! <laughs> no, not him! He's just a plain old odd person! <laughs> that, that uh, as, I, as I said, is one of my favourite uh, little parts of the game. Just a little bit of humour in this ending here. He's just a plain old odd person. Who happened to witness the meteorite. That park is like a silent battlefield on an international scale. So that's why they couldn't steal the terms of meteorite. And lately, under the pretense of building a housing site, they've been working on a plan to destroy that park in order to secure the Temzik meteorite. So that's it, eh? So the upshot of your grand deal was this, eh? Yeah, it's the ending I deserve. But at least there's one thing you must be happy about. What's that? You've managed to seal me away at the bottom of the sea forever. Well, shall we get started? Started with what? Bringing Detective Jared back to life, of course! What? What good will that do now? But we promised! We promised Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla would save them! And we can't do that without you, Detective Jared. I've been guided by fate tonight to this place. I won't give up now. Alright, fine. Let's see where it leads us. Here we go then. Back to four minutes before your death. As usual, uh, for possibly the last time, let's rewind time. Here we are in the control room. So, where are we headed? We're not headed anywhere, Detective. What? There was only enough fuel on board to launch us away, Detective. We'll run out soon and that will be our destination, Detective. 
What are you talking about? That would mean that you're trapped here too. <laughs> By the way, I'm not human, detective. Again, I gave them the same voice, which makes it hard, but uh, yeah. No need to show off, mate. I'm a remote controlled robot, detective. What? Your country's use of technology is just plain off. I've been hearing that a lot lately. <laughs> we get that a lot, detective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, show off, robot. Why would you go to all the trouble to do this? There's nothing but a shell there. It's hardly a threat anymore. Commander Sith likes to provide against any possibility, no matter how small, detective. Possibility? What are you talking about? There's no need for you to know, detective. So I need enough fuel for the, a short trip, but they have electronics in here enough to power this gun. And the robot for that matter. Now it's time to say goodbye, Detective. In the end, your fate remains the same, it seems, Detective. Grr. Camilla, forgive me. Well, that seems like it would be hard to stop. Unless we could jam the gun, I guess. It isn't over yet. It isn't! Remember what that big masked man said? Any possibility, no matter how small. Possibility. In other words, there must be a chance here somewhere. The possibility of turning this situation around. Hmm. What could it be? Well, I think uh, that seems like a good time to stop the video. So, uh, let me quickly... Oh. Okay. Huh? What is this? Look at your meal shell. <gasps> There's no aura emanating from his body. Of course there isn't. The Temsic fragment is gone. Could this change in his shell? Give us some kind of lead? Uh, yeah! So that's definitely a good place to stop the video. So uh, next time we'll find out exactly what we can do with uh, Yomiel's shell here. So thanks for watching everyone, and bye bye